<laughs> oh yeah, I need a ping in the Discord. Uh... God, this is the first time we've streamed in, what, three months? I did the Celeste streams just before I went back home for the summer. And now I'm back in my new place. Bigger than ever, uh, maybe better at net? I don't know. Maybe I'll finally get a stream for Ospunk. I hope so. Uh, this, this same mod, uh, my good friend Ollie's been uh, nagging me all summer. Hello, Pro Mini. Welcome to my first stream in three months. How are you doing? How does it feel to be back? Back here in the Twitch chat with me. I... Hello, Polska and Ollie. What's up? How are you guys doing on this this fine this fine evening? Oh yeah, I should I uh, should have specified I uh, I've I'm not here alone. Uh, special guest this this glass of um, pina colada that I have with me. Also, hello, uh, Clover. How you doing? Also, um, I hope you're enjoying- is- the music's coming through, right? <laughs> this is, um, this is the only song that you will be hearing through the entire fucking time of me reading this. Oh yeah, don't get me wrong, I imagine this is like- a plus. No, I'm. <laughs> I uh, I imagine this is an A plus paper. <laughs> it is. It is a great song. It's the um, the Lily Cove Museum music from Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. I chose this song in particular because many, many, many years ago I did a reading off of uh, a Facebook roleplay with uh, the original version of this song from Ruby and just regular Ruby and Sapphire. It was a video called Die Honorable Sea Slug and it's not a video I share often anymore. Not because I'm like embarrassed about it or anything, I happily show it to people because it's really fucking funny. It's just that everyone has seen it by now, but I think that I necessarily want seeing it. In fact, it has more views than, uh, it's an unlisted video, it's got more views than any video, any Ember-related video that I've uploaded on the Ember channel, with the exception of the fucking, like, shit posts that I went and made before I started streaming. All the music ones, the Floyd one, Patient Circulation, Bong, Halation, I think, is still up. Yo, there we go! Tier 3 sub. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm here for. That's the, uh, that's the instigation. Now, I 
I'm probably going to upload this whole thing, uh, this whole VOD, at least just to be reading it off bit to the channel, in one piece. Horse Plinko, yes or no? Yes, Horse Plinko. I completely endorse Horse Plinko. I love Horse Plinko. <laughs> What's everyone else's opinion? What's, what's the general consensus in the Ember chat of, uh... Hey! Nether is here! N3, thank you for the follow! Brought me back up to 60. Someone unfollowed over summer. Well, I say that, I gained nine other subs. Without actual subs? Fucking, this ain't YouTube. Follows. Homies! I gained nine other homies without actually streaming. And I'd like to thank whoever those nine people are. Funny... Do a funny to Geoverse? Okay. I haven't cared about Geoverse in f fucking years. Go bring them. Let's get let's get let's get the uh let's get a reunion. Hang on, let me take off my jacket. Let's get uh let's get it nice and in number, you know? I need a fucking hack up. All right, it's been it's been six minutes. We uh. What's the count looking like? Down. Here we go. It's the uh, I've zoomed in, so it'll be uh, easy to read. In case you uh, you absolutely hate the sound of my voice and really don't want to have to listen to me, and you want to read it off yourself, uh, completely understand. But uh, don't know why you'd be here. I'll give it another minute. I'll give it another minute to sort of prep myself up, you know? I'm not a, uh, I'm not a, I'm not a professional, um, I'm not a, I'm not a voice actor. I'm not a, uh, I don't read, I'm not like an audible VA. Pina Colada is really fucking nice. With one move, you have not ended my Twitch career, my friend. You have propelled it. You don't know what you've gotten me. I'm in just chatting now. I'm in the big leagues. Some some rando is gonna turn up. Like, what the fuck is this? Azemba, hello, Kali. You're you are about to witness me read off this paper of uh, to what extent. Has European tribal migration from the 3rd to 8th centuries AD affected European cultures? By Downcast Charter on Twitch. Say hi, Downcast Charter on Twitch. Didn't say hi, but fair enough. Oh, you did. Hi, gremlins and not gremlins. Hello.
Right, we all ready? We ready to go? We we reading this out? I don't know why I'm asking, that's literally what you're here to fucking uh Everything's on like a 20 second delay. No, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Everything's good, right? Like, this is my first stream on my new internet. Everything is... The stream looks nice. Everything's swell. Hang on a second, can I... There we go, let me make it less... Less shit quality. Oh. Oh. Okay. It should be good. What percentage of this cream colour I have checked? Shouldn't be much. 4%, I'll be right. To what extent has European tribal migration from the 3rd and 8th centuries AD affected European cultures? By uh, Downcast Charter on Twitch. The migration period is the name given to the stretch of time in which internal European cultural demographic... The European cultural demographic was radically altered by the migrating Germanic and Slavic tribes people, many of whom have been displaced by marauding Hunnic people. This period can be seen by historians as either the cause of, or in much rarer cases, the result of the fall of the Western Roman Empire. Hello, uh, York Shadow? Uh, you joined just in time. The impact this period of history had on our language, culture, and nationalities measures up as some of the most important in history. And though the people did not know it at the time, the tribes that migrated during this time period would create a cultural legacy in their new homes that would last over a millennium. The amount of cultural groups affected by the events of the migration era are many, however this will only look at the groups who were most affected and involved in the events of this period. The Celts had inhabited most of Europe by 275 BC but in the centuries since they had mostly been integrated or displaced by the Latin Romans. By 200, the Celts were still the predominant cultural group in Western Europe. This was set to change with the infamous crossing of the Rhine, however, and since then, Celts only maintain a predominant presence in Wales, Scotland and Ireland, with smaller populations in Brittany, Cornwall and the Isle of Man. They may, have also, they may also have unknown connections to the native Lusitanians in Portugal, Anna, if I'm correct, the uh, Galicians and Asturians in Spain. The Germans originate from the shores of the Baltic Sea and can be divided into several major tribal groupings. They cross the Elbe into south and western Germany and displace the native Celtic populations. This type of cultural displacement was common in the Iron Age as disputes over fertile lands drove tribes into contact with each other. This group would, in time, become the dominant cultural lineage in Europe, creating what we know as the Germans, French, Italians, Scandinavians, English, and Spanish. The Spanish people of Eastern Europe at this point was Spanish? Oh. The Slavic people of Eastern Europe at this point in time were relatively isolated from the rest of the world. The thick, large forests of Eastern Europe prevented much outside contact from reaching them. The Slavs would ultimately be displaced from their traditional homes by the marauding Huns under Attila. Though large populations were able to stay behind and continue to survive up until the modern day. Mm -hmm. The Latin people mostly lived in Italy, the core of their empire, and with the fall of Ravenna in 476 AD, this collection of provinces became subject to the German Ostrogoths until they were ousted by the Greek Byzantines, who were, in turn, ousted by another Germanic tribe, the, Lom the Longobards, also known as the Lombards. 
This meant that all that remained of Latin influence outside of Italy were the nobility and merchants, many of whom were wealthy Latins. An example of this is the uh, Seragius dynasty in Gaul, which would become the kingdom of Soissons. Soissons, I am not sure. At the turn of the 2nd century AD, the Roman Empire was a relatively normal pre-modern state, albeit one with an unusually high rate of urbanisation. It had a guarded but open border with the Germanic tribes along the Rhine and Danube rivers which facilitated trade and the movement of people from one area to the other. However, this fragile arrangement could not last indefinitely, and indeed it would crumble to nothing over the next few centuries. It was not common for Germanic people to cross the Rhine or Danube rivers and become... Odatari, a type of serviceman who farmed and fought on the frontiers in the name of the Empire. However, in 376 AD, a Germanic tribe known as the Visigoths cra clashed with the Hunnic Empire, leading to over 80,000 Visigoths crossing the border into the Roman Empire. Not equipped to deal with a migration of this size, the Romans mismanaged the situation until it reached catastrophic levels, which culminated in 410 AD with the Visigothic sack of Rome. This marked the first major catastrophe of the Roman Empire during the migration area. Once the tribes across the river, Rhine, up. Once the tribes across the River Rhine received the word of this decaying state of, the, of West Rome, they too began to cross the border. Four years before the Visigothic sack of Rome, a large coalition of Germanic tribes crossed the Rhenish border and entered the Roman Empire, pillaging many cities including what we know now as Mainz, Amiens, and Strasbourg. The coalition, according to St. Jerome of Stridon, consisted of the Quadi, the Vandals, the Sarmatians, the Alans, the Gepids, the Heracles, Hercules, Hercules, Saxons, Burgundians, and Alemanni tribes, as well as the armies of the Pannonian tribe, those are Hungarians. This source is one of the few sources detailing this event. From a primary standpoint, St. Jerome lived through and near the crossing of the Rhine, and penned his account two to three years later. According to the timeline of the Prosper of Aquitaine, the exact date of the crossing was in the 6th consulship of Arcadius and Probus on the day before the Calans of January, this being the 31st of December 406 AD. These tribes are most commonly stated to be refugees fleeing from the Huns, though historians Walter Goffert and Guy Halsell have argued that the coalition was made up of opportunists looking to carve out their own kingdoms in the bloated carcass of the Roman Empire. Figure 1, a map of Europe in 476 AD. The death knell of, West of the Western Roman Empire came in 476 AD, when another coalition of tribes crossed the Roman border. This coalition, led by Flavius Odoesa, consisted of the Heruli, Rugian, and Scyrian people, who deposed the last Western Roman Empire and crowned Odoesa the king of Italy. He would reign for less than two decades before his coalition was invaded by the Ostrogothic tribes, who crowned King Theodoric the Great the new king of Italy. It's worth noting that this war prov uh, proves that the Germanic tribes were by no means a united front. The Germanic tribes of this period were just as disunited and factional as the Romans and the Celts they had replaced. This divided nature would form each regional kingdom into the distinctive Western European cultures we know today, whilst their shared genetic heritage shows us why modern West European cultures have so many similarities despite their differences. Figure 2 a map of the British Isles in 802 AD. Many other important kingdoms were formed by the Germanic tribes in this period, including the Gepids of Dacia, now Romania, the Vandals in North Africa, the Franks and Burgundians in France, the Alemanni in Switzerland, the Visigoths in Spain and the Suebi in Portugal. One of the most important showcases of disunity was amongst the tribes, however, can be found in the Anglo-Saxon Heptarchy in the British Isles. It's my favourite bit. The Heptarchy was the name given to the seven Anglo-Saxon kingdoms in England, who, despite their coming from the same set of tribes, the Anglos, Jutes, and Saxons, continued to war with each other over several centuries, forming a microcosm of Europe as a whole in this period. The kingdom had originally been formed at the expense of the native Britons, the culture of the Celts, in what is now England and Wales. Hey, it's got Lloydus on the map. Looking at the map to the right, we can see that the Germanic tribes of the Angles, Saxons, and Jutes have pushed the natives to the lands of Scotland, Ireland, Wales, and a small pocket in Cornwall, with a heavy Germanic influence. 
This effect can still be seen today with the languages of Irish, Welsh, Scots Gaelic, Manx and Cornish still being spoken by a large minority of people in these regions. Not Cornwall, when extinct. For a while. We can see here the beginnings of modern English culture through a blend of traditional Celtic practices and new Germanic ones. This is also the beginning of the language of Old English, which in turn was the foundation of modern English. However, it was far more influenced by Germanic than modern English was, in many ways closer to Germanic languages of the mainland more than it was modern English. Another reason for its differences to modern English is that Old English speakers spoke the West set dialect of Old English, whereas modern English appears to be derived from the Mercian dialect, meaning that the southern, heavily Germanized dialect that was later replaced in the Middle Ages by the Anglo-Norman language, and as such, more people began speaking either Anglo-Norman or, in the north of England, a less Germanized, more Celtic-influenced dialect of Old English. They spoke the Mercian dialect. As the centuries passed, the Mercian dialect and the Anglo-Norman language began merging until they were all indistinguishable from each other, and became the language of Middle English, later Modern English. Even in Modern English today, we can still see the links to the Germanic languages in some cognates, such as accent, alone, and athlete. These three words all spell and sound most identical to their counterparts across the channel, showcasing a common Germanic heritage in the English language. Get another drink of fucking pina colada. Very nice. The area settled by the Anglo-Saxons can be seen in their names. For instance, the name of Wessex comes from West Sax. A Sax being a small weapon carried by the Saxons. The same holds true for Sussex, Middlesex, and Essex. The Jutes did not refer to themselves as the Jutes, but rather as Kentings, and so today we call the area that they settled in Kent. The Angles settled in what is today known as East Anglia, and indeed England itself takes its name from Anglia, the land of the Angles. Individual towns, cities, and villages may trace their name back to Anglo-Saxon origins. Examples of this include Birmingham, Chiswick, and Stamford. These three places include the suffixes of Ham, Wick, and Ford. The term Ham refers to a village. Uh, if I'm correct, Ham just meant home. Uh, so Birmingham is the village of Birmingham. The term Wick means to produce the produce of a farm. So Chiswick translates to a farm that makes cheese. The term Ford refers to the ford of a river. So Stanford would be the ford at the river near the village of Stan. There are many more examples of settlements whose names are derivative of their Germanic ancestry. And it further showcases the link between Germanic tribes of Europe and our modern English culture. The conversion of the Celtic peoples of Britain to Christianity was undertaken by the Church from around the 4th century and onwards, but was split between the Roman and Irish missionaries' visions of Christianity. These disputes would eventually be settled at the Whitby Synod, wherein St. Wilfred, the advocate for the Roman rites, won the debate causing a religious schism between the religious status of England and Ireland that would only end upon Henry II's invasion of Ireland around 600 years later. This was, again, a microcosm of the state of Europe in this time period, as conflicting religious beliefs sparked debates, riots, and even wars, as Aryan Christians, Roman Christians, and pagans fought over whose system of worship was correct. Before their conversion, however, the Anglo-Saxon tribes practiced what is today known as Anglo-Saxon paganism, a form of polytheistic religion sharing many of its deities and legends with other forms of Germanic paganism. This is this can be seen with the inclusion of gods and goddesses such as Woden, Therna, and Tiu, displaying a shared religious heritage between Central Europe and Scandinavia, whilst developing its own quirks as a result of this separation from the mainland. It also incorporated a form of animism, a thought that some animals held souls or spirits. Over a relatively quick period of time, this religion began to be replaced by Christianity, leading to a hybridised religion where pagan symbols could be found in Christian temples across England, showcasing both local rulers' willingness to convert to Christianity and their wish to appease their largely pagan subjects. The legacy of Anglo-Saxon paganism can today be seen in our, in our days of the week, all of which take their name from a deity or religious symbol of these Anglo-Saxons. Monday, the Moon's Day, Tuesday, Tuesday, literally, with the exception of Saturday, which is named for the Roman god Saturn. Christianity and paganism both contributed to changing the landscape of England, and indeed Europe as a whole. The effects of both these major religious groups helped shape Europe into what it is today, with each nation descended from Germanic tribes having its own similar, but still different, interpretations, rites, and methods of worship. 
The artwork, cultural practices, and literary works of the Anglo-Saxon period can also show us how English culture is linked to our continental counterparts, though similar similarities in style and substance. Anglo-Saxon artwork was some of the finest in Northern Europe, for instance. Opus Anglicanum, or English work, was widely regarded as the finest embroidery in Europe, and Anglo-Saxon metalwork provides an insight into the Anglo-Saxon people moving away from their Germanic roots. The Anglo-Saxon metalwork seems to have initially used Germanic animal motifs, but generally seems to have branched off and developed into a distinctive Anglo-Saxon character. Hi, Crusader of Trees. How you doing? Welcome. For example, the Quiet Bruch style of the 5th century, less than a century after their arrival, en masse, Anglo-Saxon bruches, this is broche, are the most common remaining artifacts of quality metalwork of early Anglo-Saxon England. When they were buried alongside the dead as offerings or ornaments they could take with them to the afterlife, round disc broches were preferred to the grandest pieces for great warriors, leaders, or religious men, over continental styles such as the Roman fibulae and Romano-British, normally Celtic, penannular brushes. I'm doing good. I am... Um, I think I'm... Yeah, I'm about halfway through this paper. Following the Anglo-Saxons' conversion to Christianity, they created large stone crosses with ornate decorations and inscriptions. These differed from their Irish counterparts, as where the Irish crosses stood stout and displayed figures. Anglo-Saxon crosses were tall and slender, often with a variety of ornaments on them. This style of cross is distinctly Anglo-Saxon, though the cross itself was used in a large tract of Europe, showcasing the unique branch that split up from its origins over time. This was not a purely Anglo-Saxon phenomenon, as many European cultures such as the Franks, the Italian Lombards, and the Spanish Visigoths developed their own variations and branches of Christian cross over time, whilst differing from each other, maintain the same symbolism and meaning as the first crosses created in Judea and Rome. The Anglo-Saxons, like many other cultural groups after the fall of the Roman Empire, had inherited a strong oral tradition by which their culture was heavily influenced by the stories and myths of their ancestors, as well as many cultures relying on oral traditions. The Anglo-Saxons relied upon symbolism to pass down their tales, differentiate between social groups, and aid in their thinking about the world around them. Much of the early Anglo-Saxon symbols were animistic in nature, often depicting animals having a particular trait about them, such as ravens, wolves, and boars, much like the Germanic tribes of Scandinavia and Central Europe, further supporting the idea of a shared cultural background. Another important symbol to the Anglo-Saxons were beards, and the reason for this is disputed among historians. Some, such as Gale Owen Crocker, claim that the beads are Christian in nature and symbolise the Virgin Mary, whereas others, such as John Hines, claim that the beads were used to represent social status, societal roles, and personal identity for the early Anglo-Saxons. These beads were often placed in the graves alongside bodies, suggesting that they were a kind of grave good which would be taken to the afterlife. This can link to the prevalence of grave goods in continental cultures, whereas almost every culture group up until the Caspian Sea, following a non-Abrahamic religion, utilised burial ceremonies, with items of great material or spiritual import being placed alongside the dead, both as a mark of respect and to help them prepare for the journey to the afterlife. Kinship was also seen as holding great cultural significance to the Anglo-Saxons. Ties to a lord were due to the character of the person and their relationship to the people, not to his station. Kings could not make new laws except, except in exceptional circumstances, such as a war or a disastrous famine. The role of the king was instead to uphold previous custom and ensure that the ancient privileges and law would be upheld. Kingship in and of itself was not an office extolled for its power. Rather, the person who was king had to ensure that he was the greatest king possible for his people if he wished to be respected. This type of governance is common in tribal societies, especially amongst Western European tribes such as the Frisians or the Visigoths. With the advent of Christianity, many Anglo-Saxon kings converted to Christianity to be anointed with and crowned by bishops in the name of God, thus tying the material and spiritual nature of rulership together and giving unprecedented authority to the monarch, and more importantly, linking kingship and the divine in the minds of the people. <sighs> the majority of Anglo-Saxon literature 
similar to the continental Germanic literature, was heavily based around poetry. Anglo-Saxon poetry is some of the most well-preserved literary pieces from the period, with entire poems being in multiple dialects of Old English and Modern English. Early Anglo-Saxon poetry was very similar to Germanic epics, detailing the lives of warriors and kings, for example. Beowulf Detailing the lives of warriors is a common form of literature in tribal societies who have moved beyond an oral society, and so the transition to Ang of Anglo-Saxon England to Christianity sees the shifting of poetry from warriors to saints and religion, such as Cademan's Hymn, which had been translated from the West Saxon and Northumbrian dialects of Old English to Modern English and Latin. These mirror this mirrors the uh oh, this mirrors the continental shift in dialects and languages, where just as Germanic gave way to Old English, Latin gave way to French. Looking at these factors combined, we're able to see a distinct cultural and linguistic heritage in modern English. Many of our place names remain either unchanged or as derivatives of Anglo-Saxon place names and many of the art styles and literary works created in this time period, such as Beowulf, have helped shape England, have helped shape what it means to be English today, despite the fact that over the centuries, many other people have made Britain their home. England started in the migration area. And yet despite this, as a survey conducted via the internet, I found that only 20% of participants could name more than two kingdoms that made up the Heptarchy, for reference, they were East Anglia, Mercia, Northumbria, Wessex, Essex, Kent, and Sussex, and a further 40% could not name any at all. The survey was answered by 30 people, and 20% could name more than two kingdoms. 40% could name one, primarily Wessex or East Anglia, and a further 40% could name none at all. This tells us that despite its monumental influence on English culture and history, it is not taught as extensive as it should be. The Lombards were the inheritors of a Germanic legacy in Italy, stretching back to the Ostrogothic Kingdom, and as a result they had clear ties to their Germanic roots. While they may not have had as extensive ties to the German tribes, having lived alongside the native Latins, not displacing them as the Anglo-Saxons had to the Celts, they still took many cultural practices from the Winili tribe of the Germanic peoples, from which they had descended. In many ways, this makes the Lombards the proverbial foil to the Anglo-Saxon Heptarchy, both sharing many similarities to their cultural progression, but differing in their methodology, the Lombard's name is believed, it's believed to have derived from the name of Odin, Langbarda, and even to this day, a region in northern Italy is named Lombardy after them. This showcases that the etymological and place name links can not only be found in Anglo-Saxon England, but in other places across Europe. The Christianization of the Lombards, as with the Anglo-Saxons, also resulted in a variant of Christianity being formed that differed from the papal canon slightly, this time known as Beneventum Christianity. It followed Catholic teachings to a point, but also held Germanic influence as seen in the Beneventum chant, which has been likened to other rites such as the Ambrosian chant rather than the papal Roman chant. This shows further links to the blending of cultures in a way that still shows the influences of the Germanic peoples on the local and national cultures of Lombardy and Italy today. Lombardian art bears a striking resemblance to that of the other tribes in Germanic-dominated regions of Europe, mostly in the form of necklaces, amulets, and of other easy-to-transport pieces of jewellery. However, after they settled on the Italian peninsula, their artwork became increasingly influenced by the local Christian styles of art, and as we saw before with the Anglo-Saxon and Celtic crosses, the Lombards also created variations of the Christian cross, known as gold leaf crosses. This shows us the conversion of the Lombards from Germanic pagans to Christians through their art, and in turn shows us that the same process of gradual integration observed among the British Isles occurred elsewhere in the post-Roman world. The Lombards also created what is now known as the First Romanesque Architecture, which blended Old Roman architecture and the new Germanic styles of architecture into a new form that whilst it did not last long before being overtaken, had a lasting impact on the development of new architectural styles that used all across Europe, including Romanesque and later Gothic style of architecture, which influenced the Gothic literary genre, and as a result, the, the modern Goth subcultures, showcasing that it still influences European cultures today, whilst the blending of architectural styles also mirrored that of blending cultures, with the Latins and the Lombards eventually becoming known as Italians. Much like the Anglo-Saxons and the Celts, in the Heptarchy would later become known as the English. Elsewhere in Europe, 
The Franks and Gauls would become known as the French, and the Visigoths and Latins would become Spanish, showcasing that the European cultural migrations in the Migration Era still affect our modern European cultures to a larger extent than first thought. Modern Northern Italian culture is still influenced by the Lombards, who came there over 1,000 years ago, as seen in Northern Italian architectural evolution, art, and religious symbols, whilst in the Heptarchy, or as in the Heptarchy, Northern England had been influenced by other people who have since moved into the region. Unlike the Heptarchy, the Lombards was the second major group in Italy after the Latins, showcasing how the migration era tribal movements now only supplanted cultures, but could supplant them, supplement them into becoming something newer, still recognisable even today. Overall, we can see that the migration era shaped the population demographic of Europe in a way that has remained largely unchanged all the way until today. Just by looking at England, we can see the influence of cultural mergers from across this period. The combination of Celtic and Germanic influences, culture and beliefs have shaped England into what it is today, and this process occurred in almost every European nation. European tribal migrations from the 2nd to the 8th centuries have affected modern European cultures to a far larger degree than would appear on the surface, with modern languages, cultures and religions all drawing from the cultural mergers and displacements of this time period. There we go. That I'm okay. Okay. Before anyone does no, for anyone leaves, for anyone leaves, uh, there will still probably be a stream for at least an hour, because it's only been thirty-seven minutes. But I um, that was that was that was good. That was a good fucking paper. We turn this music off. What format? I don't know. What what format was that in, Ollie? What format was that in? Whatever my brain came up with at 4.32 in the morning, it was due. Uh, whatever it looked, it's not Harvard, I can tell you that. <sighs> so what now, then? What's the, uh... Because I I didn't factor in how long the uh this this uh stream would be. And as such I didn't expect um I didn't expect it to be this short. Although I feel like I was warned. Hang on, let me get up the uh yeah there we go. Ross Punk! I am not playing League of Legends. I am not playing League of Legends, ever. Genuinely, I am not touching. I am not going anywhere near. I would not touch League of Legends with a 10-foot pole. I am not becoming one of those people. And also, from a moral standpoint, I can't support Riot Games. I'm sorry, I just don't want to have to. Right. Do any of you have anything in particular that uh you wanna see?
Hang on, you can see the Discord. When am I reading off the industrial society? Oh, hang on. Stream is experiencing issues. Okay, we good. When am I reading off the industrial society in its future? I don't know. I don't know how long it is. I'll have to get back. I'll. I'll. I'll th I'm. I don't want to do art. I mean, I. I. I don't know. I would rather not. Now. That is a good idea. That is a decent idea, though. I could spend the rest of the fucking stream drawing up the thumbnail. But I don't know if I'm going to be the one doing it or if. Justin's going to be the one doing it, or whatever's going to happen. And I'm not 100% sure on what the thumbnail would be. E4? Not yet. I don't know. I don't know about that one. Because I am not in any way going to do well with E4. And I mean, I don't know, do you guys expect me to do well? Hang on, what do you mean there's two votes for you for? Who's the other person that said you for? Let me check the poll, let me check the straw poll. The next highest thing was, uh, was Geogasa. But, um, I am not sure if, uh, would you all want to watch Geogasa? I mean, I mean, it's like a safe sort of whatever kind of game. I'm seeing everyone sort of drop out, which I mean, fair enough. That's I was here for. Uh, I was here for the reading out, and I've done the reading out. Extended timeline. That's fair. I'm gonna finish off this drink. So I. I know. I feel I wouldn't be satisfied if this stream was only 42 minutes. I... you know what, I'll go for an hour and a half. I'll go to one the 1 hour 30 mark. And then I can call it off. So, everyone else that's still here, how are we doing? Did I just click on the, the fucking thing? Yeah, I think I did. Well, you guys got a very good, a very small witness to my Ember folder. I think. So everyone's fine with Geogasa. Are we all good? Because I don't want to play Summon if y'all don't want to watch it. I mean, that's sort of a lie. Uh, there's nothing I want to play right now, though, that, uh... The big stream is, uh, saved for Saturday for reasons. Of which I hope you will all turn up to, because it is going to be, perhaps, the greatest stream that I've ever done. You voted Geogessa? That's based. Polska, will you be up for the, uh, will you be here for the Saturday stream? Where uh, I will be streaming um, famous World War II 
grand strategy game with a special guest. That's good. That's good to hear. I don't even finish off my fucking pina colada. <sighs> Saturday's a free day for you, that's good. Well, Saturday, 10 p.m. my time, BST, uh, that's when the stream's gonna happen. Same time as this one. I actually know where you live, so I don't know what your time zone is. Right. Let me put this on full screen. There we go. I gotta get the page back to uh, regular size. 5pm EST? Lit. Hang on, I need to log into my GSR. I'm logged out apparently. There we go. Explorer mode. We've done Canada, we've done the UK, and we've done France. The question is where now? And I'm not doing the United States just yet. I don't think I could do that now. New Zealand? I could do New Zealand. Hang on. Why can I do specifically Kyrgyzstan? But only Kyrgyzstan out of that whole area. Alright. I'm, again, I'm thinking mainly somewhere in Europe, because I'm biased. No, we've done the UK and France, I'll do Germany. Germany, Marzai, and welcome to Germany. Put the pedal to the metal on the autobahn. Highways where there's no speed limit. For some fun, settle down in Munich at the end of September and the beginning of October for the Oktoberfest celebrations, a beer festival and carnival. Dress up in your best lederhosen and dundle and join the party. Deutschland, Deutschland, fucking Germany. We're in a city, at least. I don't know exactly where, but, uh... I don't know any local Germans. Full Junius Strafs. I don't know, what local letter is that? I've never seen that in my life. Well, we're in a city, we just need to find a road sign.
Some bloody dystopian building. So is this East Germany? It wasn't even a joke, by the way. I'm just thinking as like is this could very well just be East Germany. Somewhere like Mecklenburg. Oh, it's okay. Is it Berlin? It may very well be Berlin then. With that, I have my beliefs that it is East Berlin. I thought I saw someone on the other side of the street. Hang on, I should probably change the thing. There we go, updated the stream. City Point Center. Oh, we can't go any further that way. All Junius Strap. I can't. Strasse? Straf? I... I'm not gonna... I don't know. Hope this isn't a dead end. These are all very... grim buildings. And I can't even see this one. Is it Strass? Strasser? Einbahnstrasse? Oh, just street? Okay. Is this an important sign? No, just telling us again, we're in Berlin. I'm gonna presume those are just ads. Oh, this is grim. I think I know which half of it again. I think I know which half of Berlin we're in.
What's this? Big building. Skonto mobile so forth. Is it you? No, I don't think so. Don Juan Center, that's not very German. Is it you? No. Piercing and schmuck. Hey, okay, this is a whole like shopping park. So might it be this? No. Again, this is all presuming that we are on any spell in. Unfortunately, I don't think we're going to be uh, blessed with a miracle like last time with the Geogesser. When, um... A French native came in and basically told me how Paris works. Shout out to that guy. Hope he's doing well. We're looking for a... Uh... Garten market. Russians don't work, they're always on strike. Yeah, well, I mean. Why do you think they were watching the Ember stream? You know what? I like this architecture. I think that is a real that is genuinely really nice to look at. Discarding that wall. I like that a lot. But I think I am a wee bit off the beaten path. Just wanna find a location. Other than Berlin. Stach. One thirty eight six Berlin. Ao Kung Fu Panda based. Miserable, look at this! Wash Park Friedrichshund. Lotto. I 
again, I think it is safe to say that we are at least in... We're in East Berlin. Hello. It's a little. They dropped an album. Shout out to Little. Yeah, I think we're straight too far off the beaten path of Berlin. This is a side- I need not a side road. If I could get like a major like arterial road. Like what is this? Oh, hang on. Lichtenberg. We're in Lichtenberg. City Point Center Lichtenberg. Hang on, that was the little. That might have been the little. Is there anything else here? Oh, there's a net. Oh. Hang on, what road? What kind of road are we on? We're on like a big sort of. Would we be here? Mike Ox Longer, thank you for the follow. <laughs> Nearly had me with that one. Crafty bugger. Anything else other than City Point Lichtenberg? What are you? Oh? Uh, it's gone dark. Not very fucking out for this. Yeah, penis, penis joke. Penis. I can't move. I'm stuck between these lorries. I've been cursed. <sighs> well, I know we're in Lichtenberg now. I just need to find something.
Again, there's the little. Was this where we were? I don't think it would have been. Oh, no. This is where we were. I think this was the now. So we should be somewhere around here. What are you? Spark ass. Spark ass. Okay. Where are we? Is it one of these? And again, there's the McDonald's and I think that's a... Is that the same little? might be the same little. Unless there's like another Natto somewhere here. What if we go this way? Is that a church? Somewhere up ahead? It just seems like houses. Really naff East German houses. Hang on, there's another sign. That's too low quality. Does that say Hamburg? Doesn't help. Lidl. Here's the little, I think. So why spark ass? I think this is this the road? This might be the road. Simon Bolivar Street. Sure. I need, a, I need to trace my steps properly. If we go up this way... And which way did we go? We'll go this way. Now if we keep going down the straight road... Yeah, we end up back at Sparkass. And this is sort of a main road kind of thing. It's a main road, no less, with the tram going directly through. Do we have a name for this street? Don't know if we do. H. There's that church that I was on about. Uh, hang on, there's a 
sign. Mullendorf Street. This isn't the one, I don't think. Oh, hang on. Yeah, this is Paul Junior Street. Shit, we're there. Paul Junior Street and it like, yeah, it's a T road. Paul Junior and that one's also Paul Junior Street, huh? It is. Is this a T junction? Yes, this is a T junction. I think we're here. Yeah! There we go! 3 meters, 5,000 points. Let's go. I think we'll be here a lot longer than an hour and a half. Hope no one minds. Anyone that's uh, turned up in this time, uh, I don't know. Uh, hi! Where are we now? Neustadter, Centrum, Seehausen. Do you give any indications? SMB. Uh, Schimmler. I don't know where any of these places are. I don't even know if these are like towns. English. Mitsubishi. Addicts. General. Oh, that's just. Container services, okay. I need a region. I just need to know which region we're in. And then we are good to go. Chibo. BLG Logistics. Why is German the street view so bad? So low quality. Britain wasn't like this. France wasn't like this. Canada might not have been like this. I don't remember. Some. Neidvilland. Some. Again, I don't have a region. I don't know where in Germany we are. Alrik Tungen. That's a lot of containers.
this sign say where we are? No, it's just neither of your land Nord. There we go, Bremen. We're in Bremen. At least we're somewhere near Bremen. And now what's the place we're looking for? It was on that side. Neither of you land Nord. Alright, I think I'm willing to start back from here now, knowing that we're in a Bremen. SMB... for a second. H. I wish these bus stops told me something instead of just being blurry. Is this a one? No, this isn't a one-way street. Number six. We we're on this road. I think. Maybe. Does the sign say something? We are north. I think this is north. That would make... huh? Well, we're number six, aren't we? Stick with the number six. If you keep going up, it's Hamburg. Okay, if you keep going up, it's Hannibal. So Hamburg and Osnabrück. Where's Osnabrück? I've definitely heard of Osnabrück. It's somewhere around here. What we know is Hamburg is to the west. Hang on.
Here we go, there's my cursor. Hamburg is here, and it's... And so which way we face? We're northeast. So Hamburg and Osnabrück are this way. What was the other place? Strom. Hang on, there's another sign. Cuxhaven, Strom is forward, Hamburg and Osnabrück. Again, what is this Nidaby land? Not direct, again, okay, this is directly east, so... If we're on the six, okay, we can still be on the six. Put us around. Stay here for now. So I don't want to be stuck in this forever. Does any of us see what road we're on now? Let's go back. Yeah, we're back here. We're at a site. You know what? Okay. Okay. We went too far. That's... Yeah, that makes more sense, but are we on the six? No, I was getting that wrong. That was a misnomer on my part. Ah oh, well. Ooh. We're in a lovely little German village. Which we can't see apparently. Cornelia Gurk. There's a DHL. Bonifat route. Is that Maine's sort of flag? Are we here? Might be mains, I'm not gonna... Again, I don't actually know what this town's called. I think it's this, but it's too low quality for me to see. The best thing about these small towns is that they'll always have a board of what they're called, where they are, and everything about them. Oh god, a rural street. No, no. Where am I? Where are we? Where is this? Small, tiny German town. Very nice houses. I love them. I, not, I'm not sure about these. Those. I would live in one of those. Uh, 
playground. In the Spiel Pulse. Back here again. Moose. Yeah, no, we were just at this sign in this church. What's down this road? Okay, there's someone here. I think. It's not got any names. I can't even go on that road. I've been sent down this one instead. you know what the symbol is? Any of you know German heraldry? Because I sure as hell don't. At least I know a bit of it, but not this. Tarine, how you doing? I'm just kind of doing, I'm finishing off the stream with GeoGuessr because I I read off a friend's history uh, paper for money and it was quicker than I thought it would be yeah it was a good paper Probably have the, you can the, the vod will be up for a while, so you'll be able to see it if you want. Hang on, Frankfurt. We're in Frankfurt, I think. Frankfurt. Is this like the town? Neither Erlenbach? And Neidenhausen? down here. Bad Homburg. I need more information than this.
Okay. Well, at least we know we're somewhere near Frankfurt. On a main road. Frankfurt and main Ost. Official soundtrack. Apparently I can't go any further that way. Okay. Is there anything going on here? We see what road we're on. Bad Vilbit. Oh! Huh. Which way are we facing? We are... West. How much? I think it says. Bad fuel bill? Are we on this road? Are we in, is this a Niederdorf building? Is this the town we're in? Vilbel. So if we keep going this way, that's that's the way to the town, I think. Bad Homburg, ten miles that way, and that is east. Put us I'm gonna say we're something I'm gonna push my luck, I think. And I'm gonna go for this town. Because Bad Homburg is to the east and Bad Vilbel is to the west. Now, where were we? Like, what were we... Well, we were next to some houses, but was there anything... ...necessarily nearby? Or was it just houses? Might also be this town, but I don't know. Hang on. Might be this one actually. We find the, the street name that we want on. Tom Hain. Is this is this even the right town?
Wait. Oh, it is. It is. Okay, okay, okay. In some pain. In some pain. We are... We're near. We're close. Yeah. In some pain, and that's... Sort of... So put us... I don't... Because we have a chance for a full 5,000 here. Starting place is a sort of turn. Could this be it? <sighs> we were on Altafart. But at least we got a town. Nida Erlenbach. Next round. Four or five. And then we can go. And we can go for the night. And it's a rural road. <sighs> I hate these. What are you? Street 31. Stras. You don't go anywhere. Oh my god. Stras 33. Stras 50. Okay, there's houses. Surely there's gotta be like a town nearby or something. Well, there's some in. Oh, you can't be sending me, like, things. You can't be sending me things while I'm midway playing Geogessa Germany. This is serious business, my friend. Okay, it was a font sleeping on a skylight. Never mind. I appreciate this. Thank you. You better still be here. Better have not abandoned me. It's a hotel and restaurant. You're right, it was important. Geigenschul Music School, I think. Oh, I didn't realise it was still a thing. You, do you have a location? Is that a tank? Did Opal make a tank? Were they a tank manufacturer? Uh, were they a tank manufacturer that became a car manufacturer after the war?
Oh, a half tribe. Okay. Hang on, what was that? Oh, I'm in the library. Okay. Blue tech. Zoom crap grabbing. Fuck is that? There's a piece of fucking like, art. Okay. Still don't know what town this is. And it just ends. The town just fucking ends. <laughs> okay. Let's go back to the start. Oh yeah, that was literally only one way we could go. So this is just going to be on, like... The outskirts of some small to mid-sized town. nothing is giving me any indication as to what town this is. I would love indication as to where I am. <sighs> yeah, I'm just retracing my steps at this point. I have no clue where I am. You knew wagon. I'll say? No. Blanberger Chelsea. It's green. I need a I need to focus on where the hell I'm going and where I am. Of 
course I'm not German, so I can't... I don't know if this is some, like, obvious, like... Yeah, this famous town. Hafenstaffen was built like this, and looks exactly like this, and I would be stupid not to know, but I have no clue. Those of you who've uh, stuck with me this past... Has it been half an hour now? I don't know how long it's been. Those of you stuck with me, I appreciate that. Thank you for sticking with me after the... Uh, after the, uh, the reading out. Or if you arrived after the reading out, thank you anyway. I'm stuck in hell. I enjoy streaming quite a lot, and I am very happy that you guys are willing to sit through it with me. This is a really weirdly paved road. I don't know if I want to throw this one. If I want to guess just some random fucking town. Like Warburg. Or Bad Driburg. Or Hochstra. Or Einbeck. Or fucking any of them really. Bielefeld. That one doesn't exist according to Tom Scott. I have no clue where I am, and chances are I'm probably not going to figure out. I feel like by its design, it is not in... This feels like a North German town. So I'm thinking... It's probably somewhere in Saxony. Hal Sal. I'll go for Hal Sal. Because that one's got a funny name when you say it like that. Hal Sal. You know what? It could have been worse. I didn't know we were on the edge of Berlin. That one's my fault for being stupid. At least we have a wir suchen was was dort kommt für ein schier Mannschaft. I don't know what any of this means because I don't speak German. I took French in school. Kurz ran es geht. Again, yeah, this has the sort of, like, brutalist Soviet architecture going on. Boroughs. Oh, it's okay. This that's art. Okay. I 
action for I would say this is East Berlin, but there's no tram. Unless it's like somewhere out of the way of the tram. For now, unless specified otherwise, we are in Berlin. You are back here. Okay. If I keep going, surely a main road's got to tell me. Lidl. Fucking hell, Hancock came out years ago. Don't think I can go any further. House. German is such a funky language. Not my favourite European language, but uh, that would be English. But it's funky. Theatre. We might be in the same sort of area, Berlin. I don't know, I'm. I want to see what up here. We were not up there. No. I did not. How did we do? I got bronze for Germany. have been fucking further. Right, it has been two ass hours and I have done a good impromptu game. 
Uh, good night, Ollie. Locally for you, this is the end of the stream. That was a good one. I'm happy that you could all turn up for it. I am going to finish off this pina colada. Have a good night, everyone.